Well, uh, uh, more in the news since we're talking about uh, voting measures. The Florida poll shows that uh, marijuana legalization measure falling short within a margin of error as DeSantis claims it would cost the state money. That's right. One of the final polls of the election cycle that happened yesterday shows a majority uh, support for a Florida marijuana legalization ballot initiative. But while it's still short of the 60 percent requirement needed for passage, under state law, the pollsters noted that it's still within the margin of error to succeed. Same time, Governor Ron DeSanctimonious has ramped up his anti-cannabis rhetoric ahead of Election Day, claiming that the legalization measure would cause the state to lose tourism revenue, despite the fact that other legal states have consistently seen an influx in out-of-state visitors patronize their cannabis businesses. Survey from Victor uh, Victory Insights released on Monday, and it found that 56% of likely voters are in favor of the cannabis measure, Amendment 3. 44% are opposed. The poll involved interviews with 400 likely voters from November 1st through the 2nd. It would have been, wouldn't have been enough to pass a constitutional amendment, which requires at least 60% of the vote, but the firm noted that while, quote, our best guess is that they will both narrowly fail. Important to acknowledge that support for both amendments is within the margin of error. <clears throat> that reason, our best guess is just that, a best guess. We cannot conclude with sufficient statistical confidence that either amendment will pass or fail, it said, referring to both the cannabis initiative and a separate abortion rights measure. Meanwhile, DeSantis isn't relenting in his push to defeat the cannabis reform. At an event with business and law enforcement officials yesterday, he reiterated his opposition, and in doing so, he argued that the state's current medical marijuana program has enabled access to cannabis for recreational purposes as well, which he says renders the adult use initiative redundant. He said, this is a horribly written amendment. I could take the 10 most significant weed enthusiasts in Florida, and they would never write an amendment like this. This is not the way you do business. I think it's important to say Florida does have legal marijuana. We have a medical marijuana program. Close to a million Floridians have cards, he said. Not all of them have debilitating medical conditions. Let's be honest here, okay? There's weed stores everywhere. I mean, how far would we have to go from this spot right here to find a weed store? They're everywhere, and people use it apart from the medical program as well. Let's just be clear. If there are people in Florida that really desire marijuana, don't tell me they're not already able to get it. They are, he concluded. Governor, so his argument as people are already getting it illegally, just let them do that. Such a... <laughs> Governor says his chief complaint is that the initiative is written in a way that he claims exclusively benefits large corporations. Primarily, the campaign's primary financial backer, the multi-state operator, True Leave. In Monday's event, he also renewed his criticism that the measure, as written, would not allow a home grow option, despite not personally advocating for legislation to allow for that, or to generally stop criminalizing adults for using cannabis in a non-medical context. The campaign behind the legalization initiative, Smart and Safe Florida, is also delivering a closing message on Amendment 3, for example, activists spoke at a press conference on Monday with military veterans backing the reform. Veterans have been at the forefront of advocating for state and, and national marijuana reform to allow access to marijuana treatment, Morgan Hill campaign spokesperson said. You know that marijuana helps treat pain and reduces the use of opioids. The cannabis initiative has benefited from major endorsements, including that of former President Donald Trump, the 2024 GOP presidential nominee, and a Florida resident who said he will be supporting it. At the same time, it's faced a concerted opposition campaign from top officials such as DeSanctimonious and the state Republican Party. The Smart and Save Florida campaign took in over $150 million, with funding coming primarily from large cannabis companies such as TrueLeave. The company separately filed a defamation suit against the state's Republican Party, alleging it's knowingly deceived voters about the proposed constitutional change known as Amendment 3. Martin say Florida rolled out a series of ads in September, including one calling out the hypocrisy of criminalizing cannabis while alcohol is legally available, and another featuring a county sheriff making the case for ending marijuana prohibition. 
Bipartisan uh, Florida senators hit back at the governor over the use of taxpayer dollars to fund anti-marijuana ads ahead of the legalization vote, with one Republican member saying state agencies, quote, owe an explanation, unquote, if reports are true that millions were diverted from an opioid-related settlement uh, to promote the cannabis propaganda. That was covered here on High at Nine News, of course. Meanwhile, Nikki Free, the chair of the Florida Democratic Party and former state agricultural commissioner, has endorsed Amendment 3. The chair also laid out a framework for regulating cannabis that she thinks the legislature could enact if voters do approve the reform. That involves automatic expungements for prior marijuana convictions, taking steps to mitigate the risk of monopolization in the industry, directing tax revenue to black communities and education. Uh, polling has also consistently demonstrated that the ballot measure enjoys majority support from Democrats and Republicans alike, despite the fact that Trump has endorsed it as well. Florida's governor has not relented in his crusade to defeat it. Mantis has faced allegations of weaponizing state departments to push anti-legalization narratives through various PSAs in recent weeks, prompting one Democratic state senator to sue him over what he claimed was an unconstitutional appropriation of tax dollars. Florida judge has since dismissed that lawsuit due to what he claimed to be a lack of standing and claim of injury. Opponents of Amendment 3 hired a number of right-wing influencers, including former Trump attorney Jenna Ellis, actor Kevin Sorbo, and affiliates of the conservative nonprofit Turning Point USA to post critically on social media about the policy proposal, claiming, for example, that it would hand control of the cannabis market to greedy corporate actors and that the smell of marijuana would be everywhere. That'd be great. Former head of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services under then-President Bill Clinton urged Florida voters to reject the marijuana legalization initiative, arguing that it would create a new addiction-for-profit industry in the state. The political committee opposing the legalization measure has received a half-a-million-dollar contribution from an organization that Elon Musk reportedly used to quietly support DeSantis before he dropped out of the 2024 presidential race. At the same time, the pro-legalization campaign has officially exceeded $100 million in total contributions. A GOP congressman who was previously arrested over marijuana in October that he said he will be voting against the measure. While Representative Byron Donalds said in September that he was undecided on marijuana legalization, Congressman has now affirmed he will be a no vote on the initiative. Representative and accused rapist Matt Goetz, for his part, Stop it. said he intends to vote against it strictly because he feels the uh, reform should be enacted statutorily rather than as a constitutional amendment that would prove more challenging to amend. On the other hand, Representative Brian Mast chair of the Congressional Cannabis Caucus predicted earlier this year that the measure will pass. Polling on Amendment 3 has fluctuated over the course of the election cycle, though it's fairly consistently found a majority support for the proposal, even if it hasn't always reached the 60% threshold. In Emerson College polling, the Hill survey that was released last month found that support for Amendment 3 is at 60%, while 34% are opposed and 6% remain undecided. Meanwhile, the Florida Chamber of Commerce, which has publicly opposed the cannabis measure, also came out with its latest poll on the issue last month. It found support for the reform from likely voters at 57 percent, but, of course, not enough to secure passage. Previous survey from the chamber was released in September, found that 59 percent of American voters or of likely voters in the state backed Amendment 3. Poll from James Madison Institute from uh, August 2024 showed 64 percent. And you know what? These polls don't know anything. They just talk to a select group of people, as we all know. We'll all see what happens today. So let me say good luck, Florida. What do you guys think is going to happen? Man, well, I, I've said it from the beginning. Uh, 60% is a very, very tough threshold uh, for them to be able to cross. And True Leaf has definitely spent enough money for them to cross that 60%. But I just, uh, you know, I, I, I agree with Matt Gates that, that, is, that, that this bill isn't written well enough to garner that much overall support. Well, it has lots of support. It has fifty nine. It does. It does have lots of support. But I, I think. I think. I think when it. I think tomorrow. I think it'll probably finish out around fifty six percent. Is my is my prediction. It's not going to hit. I don't think it'll hit the sixty. Or above. I think it's going to pass. You think it's going to pass? So you think it's going to hit sixty percent or greater? 
I do. I do. I think that the people of Florida want it. I think they've wanted it for a long time. No, there's well, I, I think I think there. I, I agree with you that over sixty percent of the population wants it. I but but I also don't believe that sixty percent of the population feel that this is a good bill. And so there's a number of activists that would want that, but they don't trust this bill and what it will do and how it will create this uh, monopolistic state uh, with with all of these operators in in Florida on top of giving them total uh, civil and legal uh, immunity from any 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 products, especially. Especially after True Leave has had an employee die because there wasn't a respirator on site that died from from mold. Could I ask? We're not, could uh, I ask go, a we're question? Please. I'd like yeah. to ask a question of the whoever can answer this. I haven't studied this bill down in Florida. I generally support anything that'll get the police uh, uh, out of people's private lives and what they want to consume, but. Uh, it, was this bill written? Uh, the, the, I've, I've dealt with DeSantis before. I thought mm-hmm. him to be a very honorable man. Uh, was this bill written in a way, this legislation we're talking about, written in a way that would benefit one corporate interest or it would, it a would, limited corporate interest and, and, yes. and to, to unfair other people? Yes, it, it's, it's, written, it's written by the MSOs for the MSOs. And True Leave is the main author of this bill, and they have pumped hundreds of millions of dollars into its passage. So I would and love they to opine. Wor- they've also worked on creating a task force that would enforce against mom and pop operators in the state. So it's absolutely lined up for True Leave to be a monopoly, and that's what it's about. And I think that sucks. And I also think the fact that there's no home grow in there also sucks because I've spoken many times about what I feel about patient access. And sometimes families just can't afford what you're selling and should have the option to create it for themselves. Mm-hmm. So what I would uh, just yeah. argue is that the failures of this bill are not the failures of the special interests and industries that benefit from language, but the failures of the same legislators who complain that this is being proposed as a constitutional amendment You're- and that it would be harder for them to modify or for it to be modified as a result. The, the reason why this imperfect bill is here is because legislators haven't stood up something that was right. viable That's prior true. to this. 100%, and so to criticize 100%, you know. the special interest industry that is trying to propose something that benefits them is like criticizing the adhesive on the band-aid when you've already stubbed your toe we need to criticize the legislators for not putting up something that was mo- more coherent more balanced more trade friendly more consumer patient and home grower centric mm-hmm. and to understand that they have had 30 years to pull their heads out of their tuchuses and to do something in Florida that was better than the current status quo. And in the absence of that work, they're spending time criticizing the imperfect proposal that was stood up by somebody other than those who were hired to write reasonable bills that reflect the will of the people they serve. You're 100% well, right about that, that Yarrow. 100% I agree right. with you, Yarrow. But my issue with that is once we put cannabis policy into place, you know, look, we're still trying to figure out how to even begin to fix 64. It's going to be in place and we're going to have bad policy for a very, very, very long time. And that Mm -hmm. damage might not, oh, look at me, I'm cute, might not be able to be undone. Uh, Shout out to Trump. That's the American way. The American policy. Everybody just has to deal with it. I would say say the reality, the reality is with something as simple as just like growing a plant in your backyard the government should have literally no bearing on what the fuck you do absolutely Absolutely. if if you don't if you're not making a fucking factory and a plant to like produce your gummies like the government really should just butt out of your business if you can't grow the flowers you want in your front yard would you have a problem with that this is exactly what this is so regardless of the interest and the money and the and the um you know the identity of these uh of these uh big corporations in this political sphere let me just say this is like you should be able to do what you want there's no like they're not going to come out tomorrow and say oh they're really worried about people uh you know having mold and microbes in their homegrown weed and we need to stop them from growing their own weed Mm -hmm. if they do you'll know exactly what i'm talking about i mean it's just literally a matter of time we are we're on the verge of literally giving up 
our entire freedom with this plan. And that's what's scary is because of the medical versus the adult use conversation. The bifurcation of this is what's causing these problems. And I say it every Tuesday on this show, and I'll continue to say it every Tuesday going forward. If we don't and, just make one simple singular system, we're, we're all fucked. And, and right. where Republicans where Republicans step on their own toe is when they forget to be Republicans, when they forget to be less government intrusion, when they forget to be less involved in the personal freedoms and liberties that people should be able to choose. And so DeSantis seems to chase headlines more than outcomes, because if he's not saber rattling against Disney, he's saber rattling against something that from an incrementalism perspective is better than the status quo. He's coming out against something that Trump has already supported. So again, thirsty for the headlines, happy to fight windmills. DeSantis is the Republican Don Quixote de la Mancha. It doesn't make any sense what he's doing unless you think about the fact that he's just desperate to be in the news cycle. And when he talks about the odor of cannabis, you can't simultaneously say that while simultaneously saying that it's not going to be good for tourism, while simultaneously saying that people can already access cannabis in your state. Like you just can't have all of that in a single singular statement and have it completely reconcile. And so I feel sorry for the Republican Party in Florida because I think they deserve better leadership. I think they deserve a Republican uh, governor who remembers what the Republican Party was supposed to stand for and what it was supposed to stand for was less government intrusion. And if that's true, and if DeSantis was a Republican, and if Republicans demanded that their leaders were traditional Republicans, nobody would even be listening to this guy. We would have already pressed the mute button. Fair, fair. Hey, uh, at what point, at what point uh, Yarrow, does saber rattling become uh, crossing swords? Well, and on that, we're going to oh, roll wow. into a commercial and we're going to be right back. <laughs> 